Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm Nigel from MapAction. Um, I'm actually not going to talk about MapAction this afternoon at all. What I'm going to do is to explore a subject which, um, which has intrigued me for a while, um, and it's this picture here. Some of you may recognize it. It's a, it's a napkin sketch by uh, Mikkel Maron, who's not here today, but uh, he uh, conceived this idea of a peer-to-peer -peer network being the essence of a lot of uh, what we now call um, crisis mapping and of, 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 this, uh, of, of what we're talking about in this, this, ev this event today. Um, lots of issues with this, and uh, I thought I would maybe try and unpick some of them. Um, issues of time, technology, trust, uh, and many others as well. Um, the first one of those really is, is, uh, is, is the one that people talk about a lot, which is that of technology. The technology doesn't work in the field. Well, okay, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But we know that the field is a very hostile environment for technology. All the obvious problems of dust, dirt, connectivity, which we, we talk about a lot um, as, as a constraint. We talk about um, uh, issues of um, the users as well and their ability to, to, to actually um, uh, work with this technology, the Fisher-Price model that, uh, that, that Patrick has, uh, has, has spoken of in the past. Uh, as um, Robert Kirkpatrick said in the 2.0 report, it's not that the responders are, uh, are, are unable to use the technology, it's just that for 98% of the time they're really, really busy, and for the other 2% they're asleep. And uh, my team hate me for using pictures like this, but uh, I make no apologies for that. Um, the, the, uh, so the, the issue is about, is about the, the crowd, and the crowd particularly in the field. Um, this crowd is, uh, is not, doesn't exist before an emergency. Typically, it comes together for a new emergency. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a small crowd. They're often quite much, much bigger than this. And uh, the challenge we have is to, uh, is it, the challenge the crowd has when it assembles is that it's starting from scratch. And so the issue of trust, which we've talked to, has been talked about earlier today, um, trust takes time to establish. Uh, and if we don't, uh, until we've actually had that time for team to team, team people to sort of uh, to meet each other, through normally through a process which you could call humanitarian speed dating. However, that happens whether it's in a, a coordination meeting or uh, or outside the tent, out in deep field, then that trust is not going to exist at the beginning of an emergency. Apart from uh, in those rare cases where people know each other already, um, it, it always takes time for that relationship to uh, to form. Uh, and until that exists, then I would argue you, peer to peer is uh, is going to be constrained. Um, so some of the issues that, uh, that we've, we've talked about, the humanitarian community, um, we know that, uh, it's been said uh, several times already, we know that humanitarians use storytelling as a, as a means of sharing knowledge. And I think that's really true. Um, but I think the term story is quite interesting. If you think about uh, news media, um, the concept of a story, uh, it's, I think it's no accident that, a, that, a new, that w the item in a newspaper is called a news story. So maybe part of that uh, storytelling is we need to provide people with, uh, still provide people with information products, which maybe is, a, is an idea that is, uh, sits slightly outside of the concept of peer-to-peer. -peer. Here's a story. Um, I like skiing. I also, as you see, I'm a social skier. Um, do I use peer-to-peer -peer when I go skiing? Uh, well, I do want to, before, before I go on the trip, I might, uh, I might, I might network with my, with, my, with my pals, I might uh, go on Facebook. Um, but once uh, most skiers get to the, uh, to the, to the resort, uh, I don't know if any of you recognize this kind of picture. This is, uh, this is the reality of, of knowledge sharing in, uh, in ski resorts. It often happens face-to-face, -face, uh, not on the, and that's, that's really, pe that's real peer-to-peer. And that's really what I'm going to argue is, uh, is, is the place is so important. This was a guy called Larry Prusak, who spoke at the uh, Symposium Plus Five. Um, he said, if knowledge is information, why are the planes all full? Okay, why are we all here? Because place is really, really important in sharing knowledge. In the field, the place, I've used, a, excuse, for, excuse me for using a, maybe a, an Anglo-centric term, I hope you all know what I mean. The village green, the place where we share information, is there usually a physical place um, when people have been in deep field, they need to come back with their news, with their stories, with their information, uh, and then they share it. Okay, they may spend a lot of time uh, passing that back to headquarters as soon as they get online, but they also spend a lot of their time uh, in dialogue with, it, with, uh, with, with others, with those people that they now trust because they've had a chance to meet them on one or two previous occasions. So I'm arguing here that to make peer-to-peer -peer work, Place is incredibly important, and I'm really arguing here for a, a digitally enabled physically, physical space. Um, if, we have a, if, we, if, we, if we get back to that idea, which I think maybe we've forgotten, uh, we may be able to make this peer-to-peer -peer work in a physical place, one or more physical places in the field. And I think uh, it's a real pity uh, that, so that it seems that the, the humanitarian information center, the HIC concept, seems to have been put um, into, uh, into one 
Uh, it maybe seems to be off the menu right now. Um, I'm hearing maybe that it may come back on the menu. I think well, that would be a good thing, if only for the reason that it provides that physical space where humanitarian uh, people can come together and do that peer-to-peer, -peer, whether it's digital, face-to-face, -face, or hopefully a combination of all these things. And let's not forget, just finally, when we're talking about peer-to-peer, -peer, we need to think about all our peers. Our peers include people who are affected by the disaster as well. Let's not forget that peer-to-peer -peer is a big group. Uh, thanks very much.